session chair, uh, my honorable teacher, and also my supervisor, Professor Dr. Moshe Rahman Kansar, present my honorable teacher, Professor Dr. Shah Ali Mujun, sir, Professor Dr. Mamunu Islam Dalim, sir, distinguished guest, international uh, participant, and also my student, Assalamu Alaikum, and I would like to warmly welcome to my presentations. As you can see, the uh, title of my presentation is High Performance Short Jute Fiber Perform and its Micromechanics in Composite Application. It's basically one of the work of my research group, which is uh, led by me in my university, Dhaka University of Engineering Technology. And the student is Nazrima Sultana. He is one of my senior Apu. Thank you very much, Apu, for selecting me as a supervisor for your work. And uh, before I'm presenting, I, I would like to talk about a little, little, little bit of my, myself. Uh, my name is uh, Engineer Forkan Sharka. Currently, I'm working as an associate professor in the Department of Textile Engineering in the Faculty of Mechanical Engineering at Dhaka University of Engineering Technology. And as you can see, a uh, little bit of my background, academic background, and my affiliates. I did my bachelor from Bangladesh University of Textiles in 2010. And after that, also, I received my MSc in materials, advanced materials from University of Bolton under the prestigious fellowship United Nations. And after that, I also received my PhD in material science from the University of Manchester under the Commonwealth Scholarship. Currently, basically, I'm uh, leading my research group uh, based on the composite materials. As you can see, I already awarded five of my students, MS2 students, their MSc degree. Currently, I'm supervising seven students. Also, one of the PhD students has selected me as a, a potential supervisor for his PhD thesis. Let's come to the point, basically, you know, that the world is struggling at the moment about sustainability. All the researchers and scientists around the world basically finding a way how to replace the structural materials based on the novel bio-based materials. And as a part of it, I have also selected uh, this topic to select the jute fiber, which is abundantly grown in Bangladesh as a potential materials for, uh, for using in structural applications. There are some tremendous benefits of uh, jute fiber for choosing it in structural application. As you can see, this jute is one of the strongest and cheapest of all different natural fibers exist in the world. And it has, it has also some excellent mechanical properties like the stiffness of the materials, tensile strength, some uh, heat and uh, fire resistant properties, and most importantly, damping power, which is uh, one of the essential requirements to replace you know, traditional materials in composite applications. And most importantly, this material is sustainable, cost-effective, and environmentally friendly. Before, uh, before the project is starting, basically, we were trying to search for the motivation of the work, like what is happening with natural fibers in, around the country, like the exist materials, what is the physical properties and mechanical properties, basically, that exist in the materials. And we found that the tensile strength, which is very important for selecting this material in composite application, is suffered with, suffered with very poor mechanical properties, like the, uh, the tensile strength is 160 megapixel only, or the, and also the stiffness is like 8 to 10 gigapascal when it is received from the industry. But fortunately, if you select the raw fiber which is cultivated in the industry, like the virgin fiber, it, it gives you the tensile strength like 300 megapascal, and also the stiffness like 30 to 35 gigapascal which is amazing, you know, to select these materials as a potential replacement of, which is uh, like, you know, the glass fiber, which is used basically in the stiffness driven application. All right, so before starting this project work, we also uh, think about the challenges and the problems that we may face in the development of the, you know, noble kind of architecture for this project. So we found that, um, the traditional materials, which is received from the industry, basically comes with the twist and cream. As you know, the twist present in the fiber basically doesn't allow you the proper impregnation, impregnation during the infusion process. Also, the cream present in the fabric basically reproduce the stress concentration to optimum, you know, receive the maximum mechanical properties. So we basically avoid to use the virgin materials, also the textile structure that is existing around around the uh, different industry. So. That, me, uh, that means open-based materials cannot be recommended. So we have to go for the, you know, the untraditional materials or the, you know, the kind of uh, non-open materials which can be used for cost-effective and also you know, the you know, high-performance uh, high materials can be produced from this, material, uh, from this fiber. 
And also, there are some critical points you need to understand in order to you know, develop a novel preform from the jute fiber architecture. That is, for composite application, you know, if you want to get the more mechanical properties, like the, you know, achieving maximum mechanical properties, you have to utilize the content of the fiber. This is one of the biggest challenge for selecting the natural fibers. In infusion process and also compaction process, you cannot think of you know, achieving uh, fiber volume fraction like more than 30% or 40% for these fibers. But, but if, or, if you want to actually confirm that you want to get maximum mechanical properties, then you have to achieve the maximum fiber content in the composite materials. And another point is the applying pressure. You know, if you apply pressure for increasing the content uh, of the composites, then you can damage the fiber and also uh, you can reduce the mechanical properties. So we have studied what is happening with this phenomena. That means if the fiber content is more less, then it is basically dominated by the matrix. If the fiber content is higher, then it is dominated by the fiber. That is already speak by the honorable keynote speaker. So we are trying to actually get the maximum mechanical properties by optimizing the you know, maximum pressure, and also there are some other associated things that is considered in this study. After selecting the, you know, the pressure, we, have, we went through the, the fiber, fiber morphology. And the traditional fiber basically comes with a uh, you know, lot of polysaccharides that basically increase the you know, interfibrillar angle or the elementary fiber uh, present in the technical fiber. So that needs to be you know, the, taken uh, consideration in the attention. And for that reason, we also, recent study, we have studied that by separating the elementary fiber from the technical fiber, it is possible to get the, you know, the maximum mechanical properties of the fiber because of the surface smoothness and also the achieving the uniformity of the fiber. So we adopted three approach, uh, increasing the pressure, applying the pressure, and also fiber separation, and overall you know, the modification of the fiber by chemical treatment in order to uh, achieve the maximum fiber volume content in the composites. So therefore, we have, by considering all the critical points, that we have decided that uh, we want to develop a highly individualized and uh, densely packed short jute fiber film for composite application. And we said the object is that to, we have to prepare and manufacture by adopting the, you know, the different techniques so that we can produce a preform for the, for which is suitable for high performance application and also study the effect of chemical treatment on the mechanical properties of the composites and also it is very important to validate the experimental data with the you know, mathematical model data whether it is actually past the you know, experimental data or not. So we also adopted this technology, this uh, model for, for uh, uh, checking the validity of the composites. So the main raw material basically collected by myself, you know, I cultivated uh, in my area uh, and also I collected the fibers and we basically choose the polypropylene matrices uh, as a, a potential uh, uh, matrix in this project and some, there are some other auxiliaries which is used for you know, the manufacturing of the composites. Obviously you have to design your experiment so by considering all the critical points and challenges we have decided that we use the field rated jute fibers and then we treat the fibers and we'll untreat the fibers. So with control and uncontrol, and we, we adopted the different you know, mechanical extraction process and chemical treatment without treatment and with treatment. And finally, we characterize the materials, we develop the uh, composite and tested it, and find and analyze the results. So let's talk about the claim or the development of the preform, how basically we develop this preform. As you can see from the uh, figure that we collected the uh, virgin fiber or the field rated fiber and then we applied the mechanical extraction which is uh, you know, in-house made laboratory equipment uh, which is uh, basically uh, is, uh, from a laboratory and then we got very highly individualized uh, field rated jute fibers. Basically all the fibers are you know, in elementary stage and then we cut it in different length and then we also develop a, you know, the cake producing device so that we can collect the fibers and also uh, in a uniform way. So this is also a laboratory made device and fi finally we got the cake. You can see in the right hand side of the presentations how this uh, cake is made and also apply pressure and eventually we got the preforms and uh, finally we made the composite materials. So after manufacturing the composite we can get the results straight away by you know, doing different mechanical characterization like tensile and bending. But before that, we want to check basically what is happening actually, uh, the properties, whether it is correct or not. So we adopted some uh, few calculations. As you can see, the equation one and two is basically used for calculating the density and the fiber volume fraction of the composites. 
And equation three straight away use the rule of mixture, you know, considering the materials, all the fibers are printed in the parallel direction. And then uh, we use the, you know, the different formula in modified rule of mixture in equation four, considering the length distance factor also, also the orientation factor, whether, you know, the properties are correct or not. And then uh, we also uh, consider the help in side equation, which is uh, usually you know, used for you know, short term fiber, also transverse direction, what is happening with the fiber. And by considering that uh, longitudinal direction, transverse direction, all the properties, whether they're same or not. So we basically use three um, uh, uh, mathematical model that are to, to fit the you know, experimental data. So we particularly you know, conducted the tensile test, like you know, tensile and bending test, which is known as flexural properties, to uh, obtain the physical property and tensile properties based on the STM, standard STM D6384 tensile and STM D7904 bending properties. All right, so from the figure, you can see um, the R4 basically the raw fibers and the RB means the develop architecture that is uh, developing the laboratory and AT means the architecture that we develop with the alkali treatment and, uh, and B means for we apply the binder for in order to achieve the homogeneity in the cake for, uh, mm, for manufacturing composites. So let's talk about the stress strain curve. That's so from the curve you can see the composite is basically is not like you know, the brittle, like the monolithic materials or metals. It, it shows a little bit of you know, viscoelastic behavior and this is the beauty of the composite materials. As you can see, the raw jute fibers that we develop in our, compo in our laboratory uh, with the new fiber architecture, it doesn't give you that kind of uh, mechanical properties that, like uh, tensile strength is 28 only. It gradually improves when you apply the binder. And also it is when you apply the alkali treatment, so it basically gradually increasing. So you can see from the figure that the, the tensile properties has increased from 30 to more than you know, 40, 45, something like this. Also the tensile modulus has been increased maximum for you know, the ATB, that means alkali treated architecture by applying the binder. So that there's a little bit of improvement of uh, the properties after different kind of modification. Similarly, the bending properties or the flexural properties, you can see the flexural strength and flexural modulus has been compared in the figure. In the stress strain curve, as you can see, uh, uh, you know, uh, the untreated fibers doesn't give that much kind of properties when it is uh, treated with different conditions. It has the pro pro uh, properties has increased from 60 to more than you know, nearly 88 megapascal for flexible strength, although stiffness increased from four to nearly 5.2 something. So before doing the mathematical data, we have considered some of the physical properties and mechanical properties of uh, different fibers uh, that is produced in the laboratory, like the raw fibers, tensile stiffness is 30 gigapascal. When it is treated with the binder, it gives you 29 gigapascal, and when you treat it with the alkaline solutions, uh, 38 uh, GeoXL uh, is uh, stiffness, and also it is increased to 37 when you apply binder. The significantly change the mechanical properties, like uh, the tensile strength. It increased from 295 to 475 or 480 maximum after applying uh, alkali treatment and individualization of the fibers using our laboratory made device. We have considered some of the other parameters like the fiber individual length, fiber diameter, fiber aspect ratio, critical fiber length, and also the, finally the length efficiency factor for calculating the mathematical data. And most importantly, as you can see, um, one of the challenging factors uh, to achieve the high fiber volume content, in our work we achieved the maximum 45% fiber volume fraction. Ideally, when you use the fabric or something, traditional materials, you cannot get like more 25% or 30% fiber volume fraction, whether we achieve nearly 45% fiber volume fraction by applying, you know, the individualization of the fibers and using the binder to make the preform with the novel architectures. The experimental results, you can see the 5.18 for the untreated fibers and it is increased to 6.05 gigapascal. Similarly, the, um, the, but we adopted the rule of mixture formula. So the simple formula, as you can see, the f data is not well fitted. But we have to check anything in composite material based on the rule of mixtures. So we check straight away what is happening with the equation and it's not fitted because a lot of factors, uh, you know, the variables have not been considered. So we go for the modified rule of mixtures equations where we have considered the orientation factors and length efficiency factors and it completely fitted the data. Similarly, we use the help inside equation. It is because you the nearly, you know, the, the, the comparable data. So that which means that uh, the claim that we, uh, we, we claim in our work that we have produced a high performance, highly packed, densely packed 
uh, short jute fiber preform, which can be replaced for the glass fiber application. It is basically validated by the uh, mathematical model data as well. Now the question is how we achieve this? How basically, what are the formula, how it works, what are the mechanics basically working behind for achieving this kind of properties? We check the raw fiber, how it look like. From the image, you know, the S optical image in the left hand corner in the uh, figure C, uh, you can see the, how the raw fiber, when you see the cross section, how it look like. When you individualize with the repeated actions like, you know, the Extraction mechanical exchange process as well as the chemical treatment will get completely individualized elementary fiber, which is much needed for achieving maximum mechanical properties. And also the use of the mechanism after fibrillation and mechanical extraction, uh, how the fiber it breaks, and eventually how uniform the fiber will look like. So that means we have successfully have claimed and also confirmed that how a raw fiber can be used for producing high performance uh, uh, jute fiber architecture for composite application, and clearly from the SEM image, you can see the raw fibers because of the presence of a lot of lot of polysaccharides or impurities present in the fibers. The diameter is very high. Whether after the alkaline treatment and extraction process, the diameter also reduces. The uniformity of the fibers is also reduced. Therefore, we can claim that the fiber basically uh, used in this study has achieved maximum mechanical properties. So now we can conclude that. Yes, it is possible you know, to produce a cost-effective and highly packed dry jute fiber preform using the laboratory-made preform cake manufacturing device. Individualization and alkali treatment can significantly enhance the tensile properties of jute fiber polypropylene composites. Application of binder on jute fiber cannot contribute in mechanical properties. However, it helps in retaining the structural integrity of the preform. And modified rule of mixture and help in equation basically fits the experimental results obtained for tensile modulus of the composite due to the variables, fiber, considering the variables like fiber length, angle, orientation factor, you see used in the study. So in future, if you want to make the composite in large scale, basically we are looking for the funding so to, uh, to produce a large scale production of the P-form and their equilibrity in structural, applica uh, structural application of composites. So that's the end of the story of my you know, presentation. So if you'd like to have any, any question, any kind of question regarding my presentation, you can ask. Thank you, Dr. Furkan Sarkar, for your nice presentation. Huh. Yes, Ajat, please. So thank you so much for your, for your nice presentation. So could you please go back to your uh, slides, just for the tensile strength. Sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. The fiber volume fraction. Yes, yes, here. Yeah. All right. So, especially my question is for the RB. RB, right. Yes, yes. The raw fiber with the binder, you know. The yes, yes. Okay. You see the fiber volume fraction is 39. Yeah, yeah. But you see, you see here, the result is um, here, the last one you see here, 7.25. So this is, the, you know, the experimental data. You just use the, you know, the variables which is suitable for, for the composite materials for, you know, short fiber-based composites. The results are not uniform for all, all of the materials, you know. Yeah. yeah, so that was my question. Like you said, when the fiber volume fraction is so more, is, fiber yeah. volume fraction is more, so you can, you can have the more uh, uh, mechanical properties because yes, of the yeah, load pairing. Yeah. So could you please explain yeah. here what happened? Oh, yeah. Yes, thank you very much for asking, you know, the very logical question that if the fiber volume fraction is increased, why the mechanical properties is not increased, right? Your question is such like this way. Whether I showed the help in side equation, mechanical properties increase. So the equation basically is not increasing the mechanical properties concerning the fiber volume fraction. It is remain the same because the variables are key, cannot change, okay? But the thing is, you know, experimentally what is happening basically, when you use the binders, binders basically increase the fiber volume fraction, but it cannot, it doesn't give you the, you know, that much kind of uh, mechanical properties when it is arranged in the preform, okay? So the interaction between the matrices and the fiber, that means the interface may be poor because the binder is you know, applied on the surface of the fibers. As a result of that, the load carrying ability may be reduced. So this might be the reason. So there may have been many reasons, but as, as far as my concern, I am understanding that, yes, yeah, this is basically obstructed by the, you know, the modification of the fiber by using the binders. Therefore, the interaction between the fiber and matrices is, is interrupted.
Dr. Fokan, good to see your presentation. Uh, just want to add one thing in your literature review or objective, you try to say that oven fabric might not be a suitable uh, component for using in structural properties. But it has been already established that chopped fiber that you are trying to say here. Yes, chopped fiber, right. They are not very good in tensile properties. UD directional alignment of the fibers, they carry more load bearing in tensile properties. I think your research need to do some comparison uh, between these UD structures and these chopped structures. Right. Because these are very randomly oriented. Yeah, yeah. I think the yes, question yes, he yeah. asked, it's the fiber volume fraction, they cannot be controlled in a heavily way, especially when they are in chopped, because they are not in the same alignment. You don't control those, because it's already pressed in a cake form, so that's why you don't know it. But yes, it's a very interesting part. But for the tensile properties, I think that unidirectional structure does better, even for the biaxial, I mean 2D or 3D fabric. Yes, uh, that is absolutely correct. I have, I think we have produced uh, plenty of papers in placing the fibers in a new direction and making the non-open preform, which is, you know, you, you can surprisingly see the stiffness reach to like, you know, 55 D of scale, where if you use these glass fibers, you know, to even the UD glass fibers, I have checked this, you know, comparison with the glass fiber even, it, it, it cannot reach, you know, more than 32 giga per scale. The problem with the unidirection with the dude fiber is, you know, the, it's not a cost-effective process. Manufacturing this preform in the unidirection can increase the price, like, you know, twofold or threefold. So we are claiming this high performance in a sense of, you know, cost efficacy. All right? So another point is, you know, placing the fibers in the unidirection, you cannot compare the short fiber. So that's why we didn't bring the attention of you know unidirectional fiber, whereas we use uh, plenty of fibers, you know, the, um, you know uh, plain fabric or twill fabric, which is extensively used in the composite application. We can replace those materials by applying you know, a simple technique, cake preform, and recommend that you know, in place of this material. By applying this, we can reduce you know, plenty of plenty of cost in, in the composite fields. You understand? Okay. Okay. Right. Thank you very much, Dr. Forkan Sharkar. Uh, our uh, already uh, three paper already presented by uh, three authors. Yes, thank so you. Thank you, thank you all. Uh, actually, we are uh, very much grateful to our keynote speaker, uh, Professor Dr. Bijoy Kumar Behra. Uh, uh, Sar is here. Uh, just uh, from our side, actually, uh, we congratulate you and uh, we are very grateful that you are here, sir. And at the same time, uh, Dr. Shommo, uh, he is my student. And he is also with uh, Professor Dr. Uh, Bijaya Kumar Behera. Also, uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, Dr. Shommo. And all of the, our audience, actually, uh, uh, this uh, uh, actually, uh, we feel actually, actually what is happening uh, the, in the other universities actually conference. Actually, parallelly, uh, three or four session actually, uh, parallelly uh, actually continuing. But actually, we have no scope actually to enjoy the all sessions, but actually we are happy that we all are uh, well enjoying the actually uh, the all presenters uh, papers. Actually, this is very good. I think uh, we all are here. Here is from all people. Actually, when uh, we uh, go outside, actually uh, the person who is interested or who is related to this paper, actually he only just uh, he uh, just uh, he take uh, he uh, can take participate in that program. But actually, we are lucky and we are very much grateful to all of our audience and all of the teachers and respected faculties. Thank you very much from our side. Now, Dr. Abbas, please come up and Dr. Kanis Farhana. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, session chair and session co 